Hello Tanzania, hello South Sudan, this is Letricia Pamba and this is Gumzo Show. Gumzo is a Swahili word that means chatting or a small talk. So our show is about business and technology, especially amid this time of coronavirus, COVID-19. Today I'm with Patrick Godi from South Sudan. Welcome. Hi, thank you Letricia. I'm happy to be on your show. Hello I everyone. Hi Tanzania. It's my pleasure. How is South Sudan right now? Oh well, South Sudan I think is not any different from uh, most of the countries in the region uh, given the COVID-19 situation on uh, past freedoms such as movement, uh, association and these are things which we're not used to as uh, people here. Our culture here is mostly yeah. communal so we're used to being around people you know uh, and so this is uh, quite a new reality that uh, we're trying to adjust and live with otherwise uh, generally the situation is not bad uh, but with the coronavirus i think it has just done everything and it's not looking good yeah i know <laughs> so you identify <laughs> yourself as, as a youth activist right so what kind of yes. things do you do in south sudan what kind of activism do you do uh in south sudan i am part of a youth movement called the anataban and this is a community of young south sudanese uh, creatives uh, including musicians, poets, visual artists, writers. And well, our main aim is to mobilize the young people and organize them to influence a positive change in the country. So what we're doing is advocacy for transparency, uh, for accountability in the government, uh, for good governance, and also promoting social cohesion in the country given that uh, we're recovering from a brutal civil war which started in uh, 2013 until uh, until about uh, 2018. So we have a peace agreement now and our activities are mostly focused on seeing that uh, we encourage the warring parties uh, to remain committed to the peace agreement and implement it in spirit and letter, uh, but also recognizing the social fabric that has been broken we're also trying to have activities which uh, uh, encourage social cohesion among the different ethnic groups uh, among the different uh, political divides so that, that's basically our focus currently yeah so amid the coronavirus do you think it might create a strike or something or a chaos within the community right now well it, it has already uh, raised a bit of concerns from the community members. Uh, it has affected their livelihoods. It has yeah. affected the health infrastructure. It has affected the public uh, school system. And so now people are beginning to ask questions like uh, they're being told to stay in their houses. But then how do they sustain themselves at home? I mean, there are even those who do not have homes, but you're telling them to stay in the houses. So it has created a situation of, uh, uh, you know, uh, sentiments which are currently not really uh, very vocal, but uh, we can see there's a build up to people questioning some of the measures that have been placed in, uh, uh, in place by the government. And as such, uh, there have been uh, conversations about the loss of income by, by families. Uh, here in Juba, we have a large informal sector. Uh, and a lot of our young people are actually in this informal sector. Things like uh, riding uh, border borders, working in the markets, uh, working as taxi drivers. And so these are some of the sectors which have been really affected so much uh, because of the new measures. And as such, I think it is a worrying situation which uh, now the government has to start really thinking about how to mitigate uh, those effects because we will see that uh, it, it will lead to insecurity because when people really do not have uh, what to eat, then surely, uh, 
I, I think the worst, the worst ideas can uh, begin developing in their minds. And so this is something we really worried about, how to ensure that even as we're managing the COVID-19 response, we're still able to protect uh, the livelihoods of the majority of the people, especially those who have been affected so much by the new measures introduced. Yeah, so Patrick, you're a youth activist. You're also at home right now. How is it yeah. working for you? What is your schedule? What do you do in the morning? How do you get to wake up early and still do your work while you're at home? <laughs> my, my schedule, really, it has changed so much. Well, it's not like my routine before all this uh, exactly. crisis started. Before then, I had uh, a very sort of formalized uh, schedule where I know I, I would wake up at six, uh, I, I get myself ready, and maybe by seven I have had my breakfast, and by 7.30 I'm headed to the office. Uh, but with the new reality, I do not really have a very consistent pattern. So there are days when I'll really wake up so late, maybe around nine, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'll take my time to have my breakfast and before I know it, it's already lunch hour and I try to sit down on my computer to do a bit of coordination of uh, our various activities which uh, we're carrying out. Uh, but then really we see that there's a, a, a big shift. Uh, it's no longer the old way of how we're doing things like we're having to creatively uh, adopt new ways and especially one thing that uh, in the last couple of weeks that has come out strongly is the use of uh, uh, online platforms, uh, webinars, uh, to engage with some of our target audiences in the country. So we have a lot of uh, our work being channeled, uh, especially the art being channeled to our social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. And. Uh, so that is basically where we're engaging mostly uh, and it's well a new thing we had never really exploited uh, you know the, the online platform that is true. That is more true. than done right now yeah well i think the struggle is real it's so real and i think the struggles that you're facing in south sudan have no difference with the struggles that we're facing in tanzania uh, this makes us wonder or even question is this thing Africanism or Pan-Africanism? I would say like mm. any Africa, wherever you are, any Africa that you are, we are totally facing the same struggles. Yeah, I might mm. be, I might not be surprised if Black Americans are also facing the struggles that we are <laughs> facing right now, you know? Because we're all Africans like, in the end. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to say yeah. thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure. A lot of greetings and love to South Sudan and everyone out there. Uh, stay yeah. home, stay safe. Don't yeah. forget to wash your hands. It's very oh, important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. It has been my pleasure being on your show, and I'll still emphasize the same measures, the same guidelines yeah. you just mentioned. Uh, people need to wash their hands regularly with with soap. Uh, yeah. You need to avoid handshakes. You know, we love always greeting people with hugs. I think for yeah, now we can African pause style. that. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's important uh, that we take note of these new changes uh, and we're hoping that they actually don't last for long. Before we know it, we can... Uh, hopefully, hopefully. Yes, embrace well, each other also, once again. When, when this is over, welcome back to Tanzania. I know you've been here because I met you when you're here. Welcome yeah. back. Looking forward yeah. to seeing you again. Hopefully when this is over, we could get to do something together when you're here. And thank you so much, everybody, who has been watching this. This was Gumzo, and I'm your girl, Ladrisha Pamba, and I was with Patrick Godi, a South Sudanese youth activist. Thank you. Until next time. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye.